Some of the most common cosmetic procedures would be Invisalign or any type of clear aligner therapy or porcelain work. That could be crowns or it could be veneers. And sometimes the two go hand in hand. Sometimes we don't need to do the porcelain work. I am of the mindset that if we can keep the porcelain work to a minimum and we use something like orthodontics and taking your natural teeth and moving them into a new forever position, that that's gonna be the longest lasting, at least invasive procedure there is. Now, anytime we've got worn teeth, broken teeth, discolored teeth, then we can move into the porcelain work, which sometimes is a crown which covers your whole tooth, like a, a cap would cover your head, or sometimes there's just veneers, and I think of those like, like a press-on fingernail that is just something that, that laminates the front surface of your tooth, which allows us to be a little bit more conservative when we're taking away tooth structure. Not everybody qualifies for that kind of procedure, but that's our, always our goal, is, is minimally invasive dentistry. The Invisalign process is going to be very individualized for different patients' needs, but most treatment times are between three months and 15 months. There are certain cases that will take longer. They're not as common. Um, a lot of the treatments that we're doing for patients in the office now, maybe they're, getting, they're preparing for an implant and we want to get their teeth in the perfect bite before we put that implant in because once that implant goes in, it's, it's in the bone like concrete and we can't move that. Other times people come in and say, I don't like the way my teeth are crooked. I never had braces as a kid. I always wanted them or I did and I didn't wear my retainers and now my, I'm seeing some shifting that I'd like to correct. And then sometimes patients don't know that they want Invisalign, but we notice that they have some wear on their teeth and that their bite is what's causing it or maybe they chip a tooth and they say, you know, Dr. Kvetsis, can you fix this chip? It's really bothering me. And then I say, well, actually, unless we move your teeth, we can't fix the chip because it's actually your lower tooth maybe that is what chipped the, the top tooth in the first place. So there's, there's a few different ways that people go through. So a good candidate for a veneer, first and foremost needs to have healthy gums and no cavities on any of the teeth that we are thinking about putting a veneer on. And then we want the position to be fairly close to where their final position of the porcelain will be. So we can do instant orthodontics, like we call it, where we can just, we can just fake the, the, the look of perfectly straight teeth by tweaking things in porcelain work. If teeth are extremely far out of alignment, that gets more and more difficult because we have to be more aggressive in some on, on treating some of those teeth to make it look like they're in the right position. Um, my favorite way to do veneers is to do a very tiny, small, really short course, maybe six months or under of clear aligner therapy or Invisalign, get people's teeth in just about a perfect position and then do slam dunk, super conservative veneers.